Hey, what is up, everybody? Um, I am here to give you, like, the second part of the Retro Wrestling Review Series. It's Retro Wrestling Review Series Episode 4. And, um, it's going to be on the past Superstar of the Week. Me and James yesterday reviewed WrestleMania 17. And we picked Edge to do as our past Superstar of the Week. Now, by the time we had gotten to the point where we were going to talk about the past Superstar of the Week... We, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning and we wanted just to end the video off because we had talked for so long. So, um, right now I am going to act to just do our past Superstar of the Week. And our past Superstar of the Week is Edge. Now, Edge we're going to do twice as a past Superstar of the Week. Uh, I'm going to do his, his documentary, um, on this video and then on the next video, me and James, if we have school this week, which we don't know if we will, are going to sit down um, together and talk about um, like some what we think of some of his best matches and uh, review the matches on the next episode of the Retro Wrestling Review Series. So, uh, yeah, now that um, I've explained it, let's go through Edge. Um, so, we have Edge. Um, and I watched his documentary that's on the WWE Network. Um... And you, which you can get for nine ninety nine, um, and I watch his documentary, but I'm gonna also read off his Wikipedia page, um, and if there's anything that um was on his Wikipedia page, um, that that like isn't on his Wikipedia page, th hold on, let me read for you. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of go off memory, probably pretty much. Um, I will read some of his Wikipedia page, but I'm not gonna read the whole thing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to go off memory, but I'll look at his Wikipedia page if, um, you know, I need as like a reference because I watch his documentary on the WWE Network and I'm just going to go off that. Um, but with Edge, his real name is Adam Joseph Copeland. Um, and, um, but they call him Edge and there is a reason why they call him Edge. Um, that I'll get into later on. That's his wrestling name, is Edge. Um, and he was born on October 30th, 1973. So right now he is um, currently 42 years old. And he was born in Orangeville, Ontario, Canada. Um, but right now he currently lives in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, but yeah, let's start talking about Edge. So Edge, like I said... Um, is the son of Judy Copeland, who was a single parent who worked two jobs to support her son. And Edge is actually, to this day, right now, he has never met his father or seen a picture of him. Now, I don't know if um, he's never seen a picture of him be because he doesn't want to see a picture, but I'm not sure. But he's never met his father. Um, and Edge was became a, in, became a fan of wrestling at a young age. Um, it doesn't say here, but the reason why he got into wrestling is because his uncle had passed away. Because he used to be very close with his uncle. Because um, his uncle wanted to get into, was going to play hockey. Um, and Edge would always um, go with him to the, and pra practice with him. And um, eventually, some his I think he died of a heart attack, I think. But I think if it says it later on, but... I don't really remember, like, the reason why he passed away. Um, but he passed away, and he was very close with Edge. And he was able to cope with it um, and by, by watching wrestling. Well, wrestling helped him deal with that situation. So um, that could be what helped Edge. And um, he, his favorite um, wrestlers, um, were, some of his favorite wrestlers were Mr. Perfect, Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, Shawn Michaels, and Bret Hart. Um, and when he was young, he got to go to WrestleMania six. Um, and he was, yeah, he said he was a huge Hulk Hogan fan. And um, he got to go to WrestleMania six, and um, to see the main event between um, Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior, and he was rooting for Hogan. Um, and then. Um, when he was 17 years old, he won an essay contest with his local gym, and his prize was free wrestling. Uh, and by the way, also, it doesn't say it yet, but it's by Christian, um, is his best friend. 
uh, Christian's real name. Let me just make sure I look this up so I can get this right. Christian's real name. Um, Christian's real name is William Jason J. Riso, but you can call him J. His real name is J. Um, but yeah, so that, that's uh, Christian's real name. Um, and they both were fans of the business. They both became fans, and they um, instantly both wanted um, to be um, wrestlers. Uh, they wanted to be super WWE wrestlers, but they just wanted to be wrestlers. Um, they would um, set up their own um, ring. Sometimes they'd set up up on school. Sometimes they would set them up um, in the backyard. Um, and they would do commentary for the matches. They Edge would set up uh, mat, like fantasy wrestling codes, and it was pretty cool. And um, well, actually, it wasn't. Pretty, it was really cool. Um, and um, then um, they found out about this wrestling school um, that was being offered for free. It was advertised in the newspaper because um, they didn't have like cell phone. They didn't have like Facebook. It was being off, and if you won this essay contest, you got free wrestling training with um, these guys, Sweet Daddy Siki, and this guy looks like um, Morgan Freeman, um, with white hair and a and a mustache. Um, he looks exactly like him. It's Morgan Freeman, pretty much, with, but older, pretty much. Um, and one, um, Hutch. Sin Sin, and uh, Ed they and you got to have it in Toronto, but they said Edge um, wasn't um, Edge's essay wasn't the best essay, but they there was something about Edge's essay that made him pick, and I think he had that passion. So um, Edge started going to these wrestling classes, well training sessions, but then Edge um, was told that he has to get a backup, um, so he went to college. He went to um, um, and he also had to, because he had to put his wrestling aspirations aside to pay the bills. He held numerous jobs and then attended Humber College, which where Edge also, which Christian also went there as well. He and he graduated and he has a degree in radio broadcasting. Um, which he said that that class has helped him um, with his wrestling career. So then we get the early stages of his career um, from nineteen ninety two through nineteen ninety seven. And, and he says that he wasn't um, wrestling for a lot of money. He was just wrestling, trying to get his name out there, sending sending in tapes um, to sh to um, each wrestler company so they would sign him. Sometimes he would go to bed um, starving. He would only have um, bread and water sometimes. Um, but um, what happened here? Let me talk about it. So during Copeland's training... He trained one weekday and all and all weekend. The school's practice ring um, was a twelve by fourteen foot boxing ring with a harder mat than that than that of a typical wrestling ring. The ceiling above was low, above it was low with exposed pipes preventing top rope moves from being performed. Copeland later created his in, with cre created this environment with forcing him to drill and improve his technical map based wrestling. His classmates included Johnny Swinner, Joe E. Legend, and Rob Edge Trivia, um, who later became notable tr for training wrestlers such as Gail Cam, Angelina Love, and Taylor Wilde. Uh, throughout the 1990s, Copeland um, wrestled on the independent circuit in Ontario and the Great Lakes region of the United States during the ring name, well, under the ring name Sexton Hardcastle, which they do talk about. Um, he became a part of a tag team, Sex and Violence, with Joe E. Legend in the mid 1990s. He wrestled as Adam Impact for Tony Condello's. Um, Winnipeg promotion in 1997. Um, Sex and Violence became part of the became part of a larger stable called Thug Life, joining Christian Cades, which I just, which you already know who he is. That's Christian. Um, if you don't know, um, Zach 
Wild, Bill Skelton, and Rhino Richards, which is became known as Rhino. He even talk, They did talk about this in the documentary how they became um, best friends in the wrestling business. They went well, and they became friends in the business. Rhino and Edge, Edge and Christian became friends. They even talk about um in the story of uh, when they do uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast about how the, about the sto- about the ice story, which I don't know if we'll say it here. Um, during his independent career, he won the MWCW Tag Team Championships twice with Legend and IWC Street Fighter. Street Fight. No wait, with with Legend, actually. Sorry, I messed up. Um, and the IWC Street Fight Tag Team Championship twice. Um, once with Legend and Cage. Um, the duo of Hard Castle and Edge were. Oh wait, sorry, I messed up. The duo of Hard Castle and Cage were known as Hard Impact before changing their name to the Suicide Blondes. Um, they also worked in Japan under the name uh, under the name the Canadian Rockers. Copeland also wrestled briefly as a no wait he Col- sorry oh, Copeland also wrestled briefly as Damon Stryker against Kevin Sullivan and men. On separate episodes of WCW Pro, um, it doesn't say it. It actually doesn't say that Edge was ever in WCW in the documentary, but he was um, in WCW. And then um, one thing it does say here that I want to say in my own words was uh, one day he got called up to um, the uh, Hulk Dungeon. Bret Hart had called him there, and Bret Hart said that he likes what he's doing. Um, and he tells him to keep fighting it. Um, and he says that he was going to put in a good word for Edge um, on the WWF at the time. Um, he was going to put a, in a good word for him to Jim Ross. And uh, Jim Ross... And, so yeah, but it, I'll, I'll read it too. Um, it says... Um, in the summer of 1995, he worked a show in Ajax, Ontario, where Bret Hart... Bre- when Bret Hart's business manager, Carl DiMarco, was watching impressed. He suggested Coblin send an audition tape to the WWF. Um, Coblin did not... Um, oh, Coblin did not hear back from WWF, but s- some time later on, DiMarco Car- Di was appointed president of WWF Canada and told Coblin that he'd put in a good word. On May 10th, 1996, Copeland, as Sexton Hardcastle, replaced Bob Holly's opponent um, on short notice in the opening match of a WWF house show in Hamilton, Ontario. Um, and I think on that show, he, they said who he wrestled, so... Uh, Um, and, and, uh, he got a lot of congratulations. A lot of people were coming up, giving him advice, and it wasn't because they had to, it's because they wanted to. Um, after a Grand Prix wrestling tour in the summer of 1997, DiMarco urged Copeland to go to Calgary, where Hart was informally trained, training wrestlers while recovering from knee surgery. He spent his tour earning, uh, he spent his tour earnings on a plane ticket and landed with no money or place to stay. He called Johnny Smith, whom he met twice, and Smith agreed to give him food and shelter. Smith also drove Copeland to and from the gym at and H- 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 house, where he trained alongside Ken Shamrock, Test, Mark Henry, and Kurgan. I think that's how you say that. Copeland returned to the uh, Marty Times for another Grand Picks tour before going back to Hart's house, bringing Christian with him, because at this point, Christian, um, he, he had taught Christian into going into wrestling, because he used his uh, student loans to pay for wrestling school. Um, after this camp, Hart was, impressed with, Hart was impressed enough to put in a good word for both men at the WWF, which I talked about. So now, um, Edge gets to the WWF, and um, this is when they became a tag team. Um, in 1996, um, Copeland initially made $210 per week while working for WWF without an official contract. The company was paid 
The company also paid for his outstanding college debt, which was around $40,000. Um, Copeland received a developmental contract with the W. WF in 1997. On um, Remembrance Day 1997 in Cornwall, Ontario, he, under his real name, faced Christian Cage at a shotgun taping. A match included on WWE Home Videos 2008 respective Edge of Decadent of Decadence DVD, which I have um, that DVD. Um, upon completing his training, Copeland made his WWF de television debut on June 28, 1998 episode of Raw as Edge, a, lone, a loner character who entered the arena through the crowd for his matches. And Edge was a singles guy at first, too. I didn't say that. This had been preceded um, by weeks of vignettes for the character, which included him aimlessly walking around the city streets and aim assaulting um, in innocent pedestrians. Um, Edge's first television match was against Rose Estrada Jr., who ended pre which ended prematurely by countout when Edge performed a um, somersault senton from the ring to the outside, legitimately injuring Estrada's neck. And in, in his first pay-per-view match at um, SummerSlam in August, he served as Sable's mystery tag team partner against Jacqueline and Mark Merrill and body slammed sl Sable onto Mario in a pin and position to pick up the win. At Breakout in Your House, Edge faced Owen Hart in a losing, eff in a losing effort. On October 11th, 1998's edition of Sunday Night Heat, Edge defeated Vader in a singles competition. And at WWF Capital Carnage, Edge defeated Edge faced Tiger Ali Sin in a losing effort. Um, so then eventually, I'll just say this myself, um... Edge became involved in a feud with Gangrel. Um, but then eventually he convinced Edge and... But then eventually Edge and Christian and Gangrel um, formed an alliance called the Brood. Because um, this was a way for Edge to gain some experience. Because Gangrel was a veteran in the business. This was a way for Edge to gain experience and um, Christian to have some. And, um, originally they never said anything. They always would come up and through the flames, um, and walk, like, through the flames of the wind. It was really cool. It was awesome. Um, they were that creepy. They would just cover people in blood. And the only one that really spoke was Edge. They gave Edge the mic time and everybody ate it up. They loved it when Edge spoke. Um, but it also, but also at rock bottom in your house, the blue defeated the GOB. The Job Squad in a six-man tag team match at the Royal Rumble. Edge competed it um, in the 30-man Royal Rumble match, but was eliminated by Road Dog. The Brew was later abducted and converted into the Undertaker's Ministry of Darkness, which was huge f for them um, in May 1999. Uh, because then eventually he broke away from the group um, after Christian was attacked by Ken Shamrock and forced to reveal the location of the captive Stephanie McMahon. The Undertaker chose, well, this is actually the book away from the Ministry of Darkness, I should have said that, to have Christian punished for his trespass, pass, but Edge and Gangrel stood by him and betrayed the Undertaker, leading to a brief feud um, with the Ministry at Backlash in your house. The brood faced Ministry members Bradshaw, Farouk, and Midian in a losing effort at Kennedy and the Hardy Boys. Um... Defeated Engine Christian to determine uh, the number one contenders to the WWF Tag Team titles after their match on Sunday Night Heat ended in a no contest. Um, and actually, this one actually does, gives you some insight. Well, then it doesn't say this, but then eventually Edge and Christian became, broke away and became ta singles tag team. Just became regular tag team guys. Uh, they did. They broke away from the brood. And everyone thought that that was going to launch Gangrel off, but it actually launched off Edge and Christian. Um, and then Edge capped his first singles championship, the WWF Intercontinental Championship, on July 22nd, 1999, defeated Jeff, Harry Jeff Jarrett at a house show in Toronto, Ontario. He lost the title the next n night to Jarrett at Fully Loaded. Um, 
At SummerSlam, Edge and Christian competed in a tag team turmoil match where they they eliminated three teams. The New Age Outlaws, right, the New Brood, which was now Matt and Jeff Hardy, Midian and Viscera, and Droz and Prince Albert before getting eliminated um, from the match by the Acolytes. At Unforgiven, Edge and Christian faced the New Age Outlaws for the WWF Tag Team Championship but failed to win the titles. <clears throat> then they uh, and ended up getting into a feud... Well, um, with the Hardy Boys, who was the new brood, um, after Gangrel Super Train, both Edge and Christian, because then they broke. This is when they broke out, um, of the group, and they were feuding over the man, man, managerial services of Terry Reynolds. So they had a ladder match at No Mercy to see who was gonna um get the managerial services, and this was like their launching point. This because they were both new, and I did see this match, um. And it's a great match. This was the way for them to get introduced. This was the way for them to really make a um, an impact on the WWF. And then eventually, um, the Hardys won the match. And then the next night, they did like a big handshake thing. Um, and then at Survivor Series, Edge and Christian and the Hardys faced Too Cool and the Hollies in a four-on-four -four Survivor Series elimination match, which they lost. Um, and I'll get it. Edge and Christian competed in an eight-man battle royal, which was won by the Acolytes. Um, at Royal Rumble, Edge competed in the Royal Rumble match, where he was eliminated by Al Snow and Val Venus. At No Way Out, Edge and Christian defeated the Hardy Boys in a tag team match to determine the number one contenders of the WWF tag team titles. And then at WrestleMania 16, or WrestleMania 2000, whatever you want to call it, they eventually went on. Um, they did a triple threat triangle Ladder match between Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys, and the Dudley Boys. Uh, this was all of these guys' first WrestleMania. This was to make an impact. And the match ended um, with Edge and Christian holding the tag team titles, which was really cool for them. It was the first time ever they had held the tag team titles um, after all the hard work that they had done. And this was like part of the plan. Edge had planned this. Because um, in Edge's yearbook, um, he, he, they, everyone talked about what they were dreamed about doing. And Edge's dream was to be a wrestler. Um, his dream was to defend the WWE Championship at a WrestleMania. But then he won the tag team titles. This was like part, point A of the plan. Um, and then they had even talked about how they had chips on their shoulders. Because everybody was talking about the Dudley Boys and the Hardy Boys. Nobody really knew Edge and Christian. So this was a way to get um, make a name for themselves. Um... Following this victory, Edge and Christian found success as a villainous duo, winning the WWF Tag Team title six more times for a total of seven. During this time, the trademark became a five-second pose because they used to come in where they performed a pose in the ring for five seconds for the the benefit of those with flash photography to mock and start or otherwise amuse the fans. Because they used to come into the crowd, but then they decided that they thought they were too good for the crowd, so then they did the five-second pose. And they started doing comedy skits. They, uh, because I don't think it's going to say this, they became a comedy tag, they actually became, co like, a comedy tag team in a way, but they got it done in the win, they, but they did some comedy things with the stuff with the, where they would perform with the kazoos, where they dressed up like Elvis, when they both dressed up like Elvis, they were really making an impact, um, as a tag team, which was really awesome for them, um, and they did other things to become a tag team, they pretended to be the, uh, Los Keistadors. All that stuff. Well, the keys, the Conquistadors, you know, the tag team. So they they really became an impact, made an impact as a tag team. <coughs> um, at Backlash, Edge and Christian defeated D-Generation X, which was X-Pac and Roll Dog to maintain the titles. Um, at Judgment Day, Edge, Christian, and Kurt Angle lost a six-man tag team match to Rikishi and Too Cool. Soon after, they lost the titles to Too Cool, but won them back in a Four Corners Elimination match at Kid in the Win. At Fully Loaded, they defeated the they defended the titles against the Acolytes Protection Agency, which is Farouk and Bradshaw, where they um, got disqualified but retained the titles. At after retaining the titles um, at SummerSlam, which um, was the first ever TLC match um, between. Well, and the second, like, of the two ladder match, TLC matches, 
um, between Edge, the Dudleys, and the Hodies. Because I believe that's when that match uh, happened. Because it was at Summer yeah. Because it was at SummerSlam 2000. Um, at Unforgiven, Edge and Quish, Edge and Christian defended the titles um, against the Hodies boys in a steel cage match where they lost the titles and were not allowed another shot, another title shot. At No Mercy, Edge and Christian under mask. Um, under Matt, under Matt as Los Conquistadors def defeated the Hardys for the titles. The next night on Raw, the Hardys dressed as the Lo Los Conquistadors, um, and defeated Edge in a handicap match after Christian was taken out backstage, um, to regain the WWF Tag Team Championships. Um, at Survivor Series, Edge and Christian teamed up, teamed. With right to censure's bull, Buck, Buckin, Buckin, I don't know how to say his last name, and the Godfather, also known as the Good Father, in a 4 on 4 Survivor Series elimination match where they lost to the Dudleys and the Hodies. They regained the tag titles at Armageddon in a fatal four way match, but lost them eight days later to The Rock and The Undertaker. Um, they won back, they won them back. Days later on SmackDown, thanks to special guest referee Kurt Angle. Um, during Edge and Christian's run as a tag team, they also competed as a team in the first three TLC matches, winning the first two over the Dudleys and the Hodies, which I just talked about that. So, um, and, then they, it, and then it blew off at WrestleMania 17. And I don't know what's, if it's ever going to be topped. Um, so they were great. So at the 2001 Royal Rumble, Edge and Christian were defeated by the Dudleys and lost the World Tag Team titles. They unsuccessfully attempted to regain the tag team titles at No Way Out against the Dudley Boys and the Brothers of Destruction, which consists of The Undertaker and Kane. But they succeeded at WrestleMania 17, which I just talked about. On um, my Judgment Day, Edge and Christian competed in a tag team turmoil match, which was won by Chris Jericho and Chris Benoit. Uh, days later, on the May 24th, 2001 SmackDown, Edge and Christian competed um, in a fatal four-way tag team TLC match for the WWF Tag Team Championships where Benoit and Jericho retained the titles. Um, so then uh, it gets to his single status. Edge started to become a singles wrestler. Um, he won the Ken of the Win in 2001, and he started to become a face. Um, and this was during the invasion angle. So Christian, after, shortly afterwards, betrayed Edge. It led to Christian. They feuded over the Intercontinental Championship. Christian won it at Unforgiven. And then at No Mercy, um, Edge won it back in a ladder match. Um, hold on. And then Edge feuded with Test um, to... And Test had beaten Edge for the United States for the Intercontinental title. He was holding the Intercontinental Championship, and, um, and he had won the WCW United States Championship from Kurt Angle. Um, and then uh, on Rebellion on November third, at Rebellion, Edge defeated Christian and still gave him to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Um, this thing's like all out of sorts. Sorry. So then it led to a unification match at Survivor Series between Edge and Test to unify both belts. Edge won and Edge won and unified both belts. Um, and then Edge started feuding with William Weagle over the championship. He retained the title at Vengeance. Um, but then uh, at the two, at the Royal Rumble 2002, was they, Edge and William Weagle had solid Intercontinental Championship matches, by the way, too. Um, but at the Royal Rumble 2002, William Weagle beat him for the title with that no way out. They had a uh, brass knuckles on a pole match that William Weagle also won. On the March 3rd episode of Sunday Night Heat, Edge defeated Mr. Perfect. And then at WrestleMania 18, um, Edge and Bo had his first sing match as a singles guy at WrestleMania against Booker T, where they literally fought over a uh, shampoo commercial that Edge won. So then he was. So then he ended up getting drafted to SmackDown. This was like the in the first draft lottery. Because this is when they started to have this brand split. And he started a feud with Kurt Angle. And you know that funny feud with Kurt Angle. This was actually when Edge was at his best too. was in like 2002 when he started. He was at the best in the win. He felt like he was starting to morph into a singles guy. 
Um, he was really over with the fan. He had his best matchups. Um, and then um, Edge um, beat, um, had a few with Code Angle. They did the thing with the pictures where Code Angle's looking at these pictures and uh, there's like it says things uh, uh, bad about him, like I have no testicles and stuff like that, which was awesome. And it, it led to a match at Backlash that Code Angle won. And then uh, they had a hair versus hair match that we obviously know that uh, Code Angle won. No, I mean, not the Code Angle, that, that Edge won. And then they had a cage match um, that Edge won, I think. Yeah, that Edge won, and that blew off the feud. But then um, he was forced, he was, um, he injured his arm and was forced to be out of action for a month. Um, and then um, they did something really cool with them where he ended up tag teaming, with, where he ended up teaming up with Hulk Hogan. Um, and they were going to go for the tag team championships. Now, this was really cool for Edge because this was his childhood hero um, to team up with Hulk Hogan. They do that entertaining segment where Edge is um, impersonating Hulk Hogan backstage. And this was on 4th of July. Um, and um, he they ended up becoming the tag team champions um, on on the 4th of July 2002. But then they lost uh, the titles at Vengeance to Lance Storm and Christian. And at SummerSlam, he started getting into a feud with Eddie Guerrero. Um, he beat him at SummerSlam, then he lost to him at Unforgiven. And then they had one final match. It was a no-disqualification match um, against um, um, on SmackDown against Eddie Guerrero. And then Edge won that match. And then Edge said he started to feel something bad in his neck because there was a point in the match uh, where Eddie Guerrero clotheslined him on the ladder, and he just felt something snap back on his neck. It was pretty bad. So then, uh, But then he, he toughed it out. He formed a tag team with Rey Mysterio. They entered a tag team championship tournament, made it all to crown the first ever WWE tag team champions, made it all the way to the finals, lost to Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit. Um, and this is when SmackDown was at its best, because they had like Edge, Rey Mysterio all on, on SmackDown. So then eventually they uh, won the tag team titles um, from them um, on an episode of SmackDown. And actually it says here that the match that they had at No Mercy when they went into the finals was voted match of the year by, West, the, the, by the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Um, but eventually um, they got a shot at the tag team titles. They won them on, on SmackDown. And then they... Uh, at Survivor Series, they had a tri triple threat tag team match with Los Guerreros, which is Chavo Guerrero and Eddie Guerrero, Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit versus Edge and Rey Mysterio. Los Guerreros um, won the um, tag team um, championships. Um, and then Edge had a at Rebellion. Edge had his first shot at the at, at the WWE Championship, and it against Brock Lesnar, but he failed to win the match. Um, it was actually a handicap match, too, with Heyman, but Lesnar, we ended up pulling out the victory and retaining the championship. Then he competed in the um, the uh, Royal Rumble match. Um, in the 2003 Royal Rumble match, he had three eliminations. He eliminated before... Um, he, where he had three eliminations before getting eliminated by Chris Jericho. He then teamed up um, with Chris Benoit to face Team Angle, which it, which is which was Kurt Angle, Charlie Hart, and Shelton Benjamin in a series of singles and tag team matches. Prior to No Way Out, he suffered a legitimate neck injury, which we get talked about why. So then, um, at the event on the, so that rid him off TV. They just had him get attacked backstage, and then he went on and get his neck surgery. So then he ended up get drafted, getting drafted to um, Raw. He returned in 2004 because he had to be out for a year. He ended up getting drafted to Raw. But Edge actually said he hated being out due to injury, by the way, at that time. Because he thought his character was starting to really go somewhere. He thought he was just ready. He was almost there to become um, a main eventer in the company. Um... But anyhow, he ended up uh, going, so he hated that. So then um, he returned after WrestleMania. 
Um, at Backlash, he defeated Kane um, and went on and on the April nineteenth, two thousand four episode of War. He and Chris Benoit won the World Tag Team Championships. They continued a close partnership even after losing the titles. At Bad Blood, Edge and Christian defeated La Resistance in a tag team match for the World Tag Team Championship by disqualification, but he didn't win the titles. The team disbanded because then um, Edge won the Intercontinental Championship from Randy Orton at Vengeance, um, thus becoming the 100th Intercontinental Champion. So then at SummerSlam, um, Edge ended up uh, going into SummerSlam. He was in a triple threat match with... Um, Chris Jericho and Batista, and he ended, and it was in his hometown, and he ended up getting booed. So that kind of lit a fire underneath Edge. Um, but he ended up retaining the Intercontinental Championship, and then he suffered a legitimate groin injury, so he had to give up the title. Um, and then um, he returned, and he became a villain character, and he became obsessed with winning the uh, World Heavyweight Championship. He because he had been with the company so long, he finally wanted to get the World Heavyweight Championship. And he was really legit feeling this way, too. Um, so then, um, Edge, Chris Benoit, and Shawn Michaels received a title shot. They were, like, chosen options at Tybo Tuesday. You could vote them in. Um, the audience could vote in who he wanted, um, who they wanted to be the champion. They voted in Shawn Michaels, um, to get the shot. So Edge and Chris Benoit got a tag team title shot. And in the match, Edge abandoned his partner. Although Benoit was still able to win the match. So he was still... Um, um, so Edge still was the tag team champion. So then he main event. He interfered in the... In Shawn Michaels championship match. And cost him the championship. And then... Um, the next on the November on the November first episode of War, Edge and Benoit lost the World Tag Team Championships with Edge abandoned and Benoit again, drastically. And then this is when he started changing his gimmick, he be, gimmick, um, to the egotistical brash villain. Then at Survivor Series, Edge was part of Team Triple H along with, you know, Triple H, Batista, and Snitsky. They were defeated by Team Orton, which was Randy Orton, Chris Benoit. Chris Jericho and Maven, um, and during the match, Edge eliminated both Be Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho uh, before getting eliminated by Randy Orton. He actually went, he he was like, pretty much the he he nearly, he lasted pretty much till the end. He, it was on it was down to him and Triple H on the t team. There was just them, um, and then on a November episode of War, both Edge and Benoit competed in a number one contenders battle royal, but they eliminated each other. Simultaneously, so they both got the title shot against Triple H for the World Heavyweight Championship, um, and they both got the match. But then um, eventually, Randy Orton screw attacked um, Triple H and uh, laid him out. So then um, Edge uh, went for the spear. Chris Benoit caught him on the cross face, and Edge was able to reverse it on Chris Benoit. And Chris Benoit's shoulders got pinned down to the mat as Edge tapped out. So then uh, they went on to a. Um, a um, they went on to uh at New Year's Revolution have a uh, match. Edge was in one of the participants in the Elimination Chamber match, and he got screwed out of it by Shawn Michaels. Um, so then they led to a match between them at the Rumble, and Edge won that. Um, and then um, at WrestleMania 21, the Money in the Bank ladder match. They had the first Money in the Bank ladder match. Edge won the match, so he was allowed a future World Heavyweight title match. So they did blow it off. They finally had Edge get his moment at WrestleMania where he was going to be guaranteed a World Championship match. Um, and then it said, but it says here, according to a podcast interview with Chris Jericho, Copeland said he did not initially like the idea of a ladder of the ladder match, and even told WWE management not to include him on. The WrestleMania 21 card altogether. However, he was talked into competing by other participants like Jericho and Glenn Jacobs, which is Kane, who said the match had this, the potential to be a big success. Um, so he didn't really want to be in the match, but he ended up being in it anyways. And then Edge and Chris Benoit blew off the few and Edge beat him in a last man standing match at Backlash. So then um, later on in the year, um, at the time, Lita 
was dated. This was with a real life thing. Matt was dating Matt Hardy, but Matt Hardy had been uh, out due to injury. So Edge and Lita were on the road together, and they found out they had a lot in common. So pretty much, they became they Lita cheated on Matt Hardy, um, and ended up dating Edge. So Matt Hardy found out about it, and um, they uh, and he made it public on the internet. So they had to rehire Matt Hardy so they could utilize it in the few. But this was a really downward spiral in Edge's career. Um, he lost a lot of friends, um, and no one and he became. And no one really liked him. It was really he was he was pretty much alone. The only ones that were really there for him were Christian and William Regal, who were like their best friends. Michael P. S. Hayes was still there for him, but Edge used this to become like the top heel in the company because this launched off Edge to be in the top heel. This was like what he needed. This became so in a way this actually helped out Edge and it helped out Matt Hardy. So they turned that real life feud that had Matt Hardy get resigned in the company. Um, and they had a series of matches that Edge won at SummerSlam. They had a street fight that nobody won because they both couldn't continue after Matt Hardy's side affected him off the stage and he took on himself. Um, and then um, Matt Hardy beat him in a steel cage match on Unforgiven. And then um, on an episode of Raw, they had a they had a ladder match for Edge's Money in the Bank briefcase and um, Edge won that. So then eventually. Um, And then he started a feud for the Intercontinental Championship with Ric Flair. Um, and he started dubbing himself the Rated R Superstar. That's how he got that name. Um, and he started, and he got his own talk show called The Cutting Edge with Ric Flair as a guest on it. So then eventually um, he got himself to, at New Year's Revolution, res, at New Year's Revolution, he got himself disqualified in an Intercontinental Championship match. Um, against Ric Flair, but Edge had this Money in the Bank conflict, and he didn't want to, I mean, not conflict, contract, and Edge wanted to do something special with this Money in the Bank, he didn't want to just cash in it on a regular match, so what happened was John Cena had defended his WWE Championship in a grueling elimination chamber match, he was all bloody, he was exhausted, um, so Vince McMahon had come out and uh, announced that a certain individual was cashing in his opportunity um, that he had won at WrestleMania. He was cashing in his Money in the Bank briefcase. Um, and Edge had won the WWE Championship from John Cena that night. And this right here pretty much made the Money in the Bank concept. Edge made the Money in the Bank concept. You know what? Edge is probably going to be the greatest Money in the Bank ladder match winner of all time. Just because he made the Money in the Bank. He made these cheap cash-ins happen. Where the guy comes out after a guy had a match and he's exhausted. And he ends up just stealing the title. This launched off this launched off that Money in the Bank concept. This also launched off um, Edge as the ultimate opportunity because he was able to come in and have the opportunity. And then what happened? Edge had a live sex celebration, and someone told him backstage that he was having one. Edge thought he was kidding, but it was legit. And uh, he had to have he him and Lita had a live sex celebration on the at the end of an episode of Raw. That drew a 5.1 rating. They said that was the highest rated Raw. Um, in Since the summertime of like 2003 or something. Um, but it was the highest rated Raw. In a long time. And. Edge thought they had something here. With him being the champion. He could have gone into Wrestlemania with it. But then they, and three weeks later at the Royal Rumble. He lost the championship to John Cena, which that made Edge really angry. He thought they had something there. They could have done a different fresh by having him go into WrestleMania as champion. <clears throat> so, uh, but they went into the predictable well um, and had Cena go into the main event as champion. So this lit a fire underneath Edge. Uh, but he, and uh, Mick fully realized this, so they actually ended up working into a program together. And he, they wanted to steal the show at WrestleMania. So at WrestleMania 22... Probably won at Edge and maybe Mick Foley's best match. They had the hardcore match and they stole the show that night. That was the match of the night. Um, and it was great. Mick Foley even knew that Edge was the best wrestler at that time. So that's why they had this match. And Edge spears Mick Foley through a flaming table and wins the matchup. So then eventually they did the main event. 
um, with Edge versus Triple H versus John Cena because they realized they should have put Edge in the main event. And then they started um, finally getting the grasp and they finally gave Edge the championship. He beat Rob Van Dam and John Cena on an episode of Raw to win the championship. Um, and then he just went on with the title. They had That's launched off the big feud between Edge and John Cena. Um, where Edge beat, where they, Ed, where Edge literally went to John Cena's father's house, slapped around his father, which was awesome. He beats John Cena in his hometown of Boston, where if he got himself disqualified he, or counted out, he would lose the title, but he cheated to win the match. And then he walls into his hometown of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and he got the main event, um, and he got shielded in the same town that had booed him at, um... That had booed him two years prior. He got to go in and he got an ovation. And him and John Cena stole the show. And Ed's walked out still with the WWE. No wait. I mean John Cena had walked out with the WWE Championship that night. I'm, I apologize. I screwed up. But afterwards it was like. Because it was really cool. Because Edge was like, wa had watched WrestleMania in that building. WrestleMania 6. And he was later, and then he later on he went on the main event. Um, a pay per view. He, it made him really emotional. And then this Edge really too had made John Cena a better wrestler. Was his feud with Edge. And Edge always took his time. You know, you never really recall Edge having a bad match. He always planned out the spots he wanted to do. So then later on, he formed a tag team with Randy Orton um, called Rated RKO. Because DX, which was Shawn Michaels and Triple H, had screwed him out of the... WWE Championship numerous times, so they, they formed a tag team, and they beat DX at um, Cyber Sunday um, because of interference from Eric Bischoff, and then um, they won the World Tag Team Championships from Rowdy Roddy Piper and Ric Flair because they attacked Piper before the matchup, um, and then um, they went on, um, Edge went on to the Rumble, went in the Rumble, did what he did there. He uh, he was he ended up being in the Money in the Bank ladder match again, and then they eventually Rated RKO dissolved. They lost the World Tag Team Titles to John Cena and Shawn Michaels, um, and then um, eventually he went on again to um, become the Ultimate Opportunist. This is when he kind of really started to become the Opportunist. Like Money New Year's Revolution, he was kind of an Opportunist, but not just yet, I should say. <coughs> But then at um, New Year's Revolution, um, he beat, he ended up uh, challenging, no, not at New Year's Revolution, on an episode of Raw in 2007, he ended up challenging Mr. Kennedy um, for his Money in the Bank c contract, and if Edge had won, he would get his contract. Because Mr. Kennedy, he was sick of Mr. Kennedy talking about how at WrestleMania 24, he was going to cash in his contract, but he wanted Ed, Mr. Kennedy to defend that like a title. So Edge attacked Kennedy before the matchup, speared him, so that we can Kennedy. So Edge speared him. He won the Money in the Bank contract from him, which kind of sucked for Kennedy because um, he had gotten injured, so they overdiagnosed his injury. They thought he was going to be out longer than he was, so that they put the Money in the Bank contract on Edge. But I think that definitely boosted Edge again, so that was awesome. Um, and really, Edge, you could say, became the first two-time Money in the Bank winner just because of the fact that he was the one that the first one to actually hold the briefcase, and then the, on that SmackDown that week, which I did see, it was like one of my first, it was my first time i ever seen Edge. He, um, after Undertaker had been weakened in by, by a steel cage match and then an attack from Mark Henry, Edge snuck in, stole the championship from The Undertaker and became the new World Heavyweight Champion. We went on to feud with Batista, um, which kind of started to take a toll on his neck still because he, it was, it, it, Hurt for him to um, to get to um, injure to take the landing of the Batista bomb because it, he says it's not an easy move to take, um, and he ended up beating Batista um, for the and retain his world championship. But then he ended up getting injured again by Kane, or well, I don't know if it was really by Kane, but he ended up getting injured again um, and lost the world title. So he had to take some time off. And then he returned at Survivor Series 2007, and he screwed The Undertaker out of the World Championship at Survivor Series, and it helped Batista win. Um, so then, um, 
Let me think. So then he ended up having the alliance with Vicky Guerrero. With Vicky Guerrero. Vicky, Vicky Guerrero had just become the general manager of SmackDown. And, um... Ed, and the... And they became an alliance, and pretty much Edge is the reason why Vicky Guerrero became the heel that we knew. It was her alliance with Edge. So he helped boost Vicky Guerrero into the big heel that she became, the big hated heel. Um, and they were in a relationship. So then in Armageddon, um, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder pitched an idea to Edge that they that Edge takes them under the win, and Edge helped boost Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. They became known as the Edgeheads, um, or, but, or you could have fought on Hawkins and Ryder, and they helped him win the World Heavyweight Championship in Armageddon 2007, so then Edge went on to hold the world title all the way until WrestleMania 24, um, and, uh, he made a vent in the title, the show against The Undertaker, um, and he ended up, uh, he felt, and he even said that he felt validated by the company once, um, he went on the main event against The Undertaker because he felt validated by the company um, because he wanted th that main event shot at WrestleMania 22, which is when it should have happened anyways. So then um, he felt validated by the company and when he said that when his arms were shaking, because one thing they don't know is um, when he gets bad neck, his arms start shaking So and, and when his hands feel numb. But then eventually um, Edge... Retained the world heavyweight champ, but Edge lost the world title to the Undertaker. Had that great feud with the Undertaker. He said that's one of his favorite feuds in the company, and eventually he um he beat Undertaker in a TLC match um to banish him from the company. But then he lost the world heavyweight championship to CM Punk um when CM Punk cashed in Money in the Bank on him. Then he lost the Hell in a Cell match to the Undertaker. And then Edge said he had to take time off. He needed time to um collect he needed time to um because he was just getting burnt out from all because he had to work all those main events so he went up and rented out like a ranch and he went out and just kind of did his own thing he returned at survivor series and um pretty much um pulled like a money in the bank type of thing but where he had Vicky Guerrero put him in a wwe championship match he wasn't supposed to be in while the match was happening and he ended up winning the wwe championship but then he lost it to Jeff Hardy and Armageddon. Then he won it back again. Um, and um, and he always found a way. That's what one of Edge's things. He always found a way to, if he to get the title um, in the most creative ways. One of the most creative ways. So when he won the title from Jeff Hardy at the Royal Rumble, um, at, at the Elimination Chamber. 2009, well, it wasn't called the Elimination Chamber, it was called No Way Out 2009, in the Elimination Chamber match. He was in the match, and he had gotten eliminated, like, um, in, like, under five minutes. So he was out of the match. Later on that night, he was a SmackDown superstar, too. So later on that night, he goes to, he goes to the Raw Elimination Chamber match, and he takes out Kofi Kinston. He ambushes Kofi Kinston, who was supposed to be in the match. And he takes his spot, and he ends up later on in the night walking out with the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, which was huge. It's probably one of my favorite moments of Edge was when he did that, because he was really smart to do that. Then he lost the title three weeks later to John Cena with to John Cena at WrestleMania 25. Um... With the, the triple threat match involving Big Show, he won it back three weeks later in a last man standing match against Cena. And then, um, yeah, and then he won it, and then he uh, had a few with Jeff Hardy for the title. He lost it in a ladder match, which was a great ladder match against Jeff Hardy. Then he ended up getting he ended up uh, winning the unified tag team championships with Chris Jericho, which I was all for that. I liked him as a tag team, but unfortunately he ended up getting injured. He ended up tearing his Achilles tendon. Um, then he returned as a face. He won the Rumble, um, but didn't win the title at WrestleMania. He fought Jericho in a great match, but he lost. And then um, he got drafted to Raw. He turned heel. Screwed Randy Orton out of the title. They had a feud at going over the limit. They had a bad match. Um, so then eventually, um, 
he ended up uh, just doing his thing on Raw, just kind of as there. Um, got traded back to SmackDown, turned face. He won the uh, World Heavyweight Championship against Kane, Alberto Del Rio, and Rey Mysterio in a Fatal 4-Way TLC match. Then he um, beat, lost it to Dolph Well, technically was stripped of the title. Um, and then he won it from Dolph Ziggler, who got awarded the title. And then um, he had his final match at WrestleMania against Alberto Del Rio um, and retained the world title. And then he had to retire because he said before the match he started feeling numbness in his arms. And um, he's, he knew something was wrong. If I can just read it... Um, I have to go down because uh, he says um, on the April 11th, 2011 episode of War, Edge gave a speech um, about his career and the realities of wrestling. He said he looked further, he said he took further tests to his basic strength tests and an MLI forced him to retire. Um, leading up to his retirement, Announcement he had reflected upon his previous neck injury and cervical vertebral um, fusion and felt numbness in his arms. This was diagnosed as a cervical spinal stenosis and doctors would not clear him to compete for the risk of neck down, paralyzed, or death. Um, later that sa same week, on the April 15th episode of SmackDown, he officially relinquished the World Heavyweight title, um, retiring as the World Champion. So at least he can say he retired as a World Champion. Not a lot of people can say that they won, that they retired as a World Heavyweight Champion. And Edge did that. Um, that's something that not even Hulk Hogan did. Something that not even Stone Cold Steve Austin did. Something that not even The Undertaker is going to do. He can say that he retired as a World Heavyweight Champion. It was really sad to see that because he saw Edge, and he was a childhood. He, as a kid, he um, he um, grew up watching the business. He loved the business, um, but um, and just to have him taken away, the fact that he was never going to be able to wrestle again, and he put his body on the line for this business. He. Never had a bad match. I don't really recall him ever having a bad match. I think he's had a, had a bad match. Um, but he always tried to have good matches. He always pre-planned everything out that he wanted to do in the match. And he just seemed like an uplifting guy. You could cold talk to him about anything. Um, and he's just really talented too. He's not just talented because then after he retires, he ended up going on. He Now he does um, Haven. Um, and then... Um, now he can do. Now he's branched into acting. Now he's moved to North Carolina, and now he's. He's just at peace. I think he said. He says that he doesn't really miss the business. He's like that. He's. He says that he was ready to retire. He was going to retire anyways once his contract came up. But he liked the fact that the choice was given out, taken away from him, just because that he didn't have to make that choice for himself. So. That's definitely something to think about. Um. And um, Stone Cold Steve Austin even gave him advice not to soak away his sorrows because that's what he did because he had, he retired from the exact same injury. Um, and, you know, um, and then eventually he has a kid now, um, a baby, a daughter, and um, he's been um, in a bunch of movies. In 1999, he was in Beyond the Mat. 2000, he was in uh, Highlander, um, Endgame. In 2012, Bend in the Rules. 2015, Damn Dumb Luck. And then in 2016, he was in. He's going to be in a movie called um, Inter, um, Interrogation. I don't know how to say that word. But yeah, he, now he's in The Flash. He was in Haven. Um, and he went on to do his thing there. And I actually do want to see Haven. It looks like a good show. Um... And now he's going to be in the... He was in Austin's podcast recently. And now he's going to have his own show on the WWE Network called Edge and Christian. Show that totally um, reeks of awesomeness. Um, and Edge pretty much has excelled. He um, was the, probably the greatest hero in the company. Um, and to, just because of the things that he did. 
And he always made something in a negative and tried to turn it into a positive. Never looked on the negative side of things. Um, and he definitely is, his presence is definitely missing the wrestling business. Um, and he just put his body on the line. He was a young kid that had this as a passion. Everybody else he had said wanted to be firefighters or other things. And he wanted to be a wrestler. And he lived through his dream. He, no matter what it took, he said he didn't have a backup plan. This was his plan from day one. And he wanted to be a wrestler. And that's how I'm going to remember Edge. That if you have a passion and you have a dream and you stick with your dream, you can ex succeed in that dream. Um, and that's what how I want to remember Edge. I also want to remember Edge of him putting his body on the line for the fans and for the dedication of the company. So that's how I'm going to remember Edge. Never having a bad match, always pre-planned his matches. Um, and the fact that he took, anytime he, he would take his anchor and utilize it to perform in the win. He took his anchor, WrestleMania 22 performed it in the win. So that's how I'm going to uh, remember Edge is for all those things. But that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to end off the video. Um, I just figured, you know, uh, I would do the documentary now. And then on the next on the next episode of the Retro Wrestling Review Series, I am going to, um, up, I am going, um, we, me and James will talk, because he's going to be the past superstar of the week in the next episode. We are going to review his best matches, um, which is going to be something fun. I can't wait to do that, Pote. Me and James need to sit down this week, uh, and we're going to talk about his, what we think his best matches are. We've been kind of doing that, but we I think we have too many matches, so we might have to cut some matches back. Um, and maybe I'll pick five, and James will pick five. We'll do a ten of his best matches or something, but we're going to talk about it. But that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you guys for watching this video, and um, I got... Three words for you. Like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, so there's actually a few things I forgot to mention about Edge's career that I figured I'd just touch up on right now. So then, uh, after he retired, he, uh, un interrupted, um, Alberto Del Rio's mock retirement party for him. He did that on April, April 22nd, 2011. And then he made an, ex an appearance at Extreme Wolves. Where he helped Christian win the World Heavyweight Championship, and then he made it by money beat Alberto Del Rio, and then he appeared at SummerSlam where Christian was going to have him in his corner for a World Heavyweight Championship defense against Randy Orton. However, Edge disappointed by the cowardly tactics Christian used to win his second World Heavyweight Championship, berated him, walked out on him, and um and called him a whining little bitch, which allowed Randy Orton to win the championship for a second time. On the September 16th, 2011 edition of SmackDown in his hometown of Toronto, Ontario, um, Texas, he hosted the cutting edge between Mal Kenway and World Heavyweight Champion Randy Orton. Um, after the show went off the air, they held Edge Appreciation Night to celebrate his career, which they talked about in his documentary, how they had everybody come out from his friends, everyone that we saw in that documentary. And then on March 31st, 2012, Edge um, had cut his... Had, was inducted into the Hall of Fame by Christian um, during WrestleMania weekend, and he actually ended up having the new haircut that he has that's on the thumbnail of this video. Um, and then uh, Edge made in a surprise appearance on the April 23rd, 2012 edition of Raw, confronting his longtime rival John Cena about Brock Lesnar. He mentioned that despite sharing the biggest rivalry of their careers, they always shared mutual admiration for professional wrestling. In the act of in an act of motivation, he told Cena to wake up and beat Brock Lesnar. He also mentioned beforehand that he was not supposed to be on that, on the show that night. Also declaring that he would no longer be under contract in a couple of days because he would, technically was still under contract. I think he probably would have left uh, after WrestleMania twenty eight. Um, after his contract, after this, his contract with WWE had legitimately expired. Um, on the September 22nd, 2012, so if they still had him on a contract, I kind of wish they would have done maybe a little bit more things with him. Uh, but on the September 20th, 2012 edition of SmackDown, Edge made an appearance addressing Team How No, which had consisted of Kane and Daniel Bryan. Edge returned on the September 9th, 2013 edi episode, edition, um, hold on, let me refer you. Edge returned on the September 9th, 2013 episode of Raw in his hometown of Toronto, where he hosted his talk show, The Cutting Edge, having Daniel Bryan as a special guest after Randy Orton was scheduled to be his original guest. 
Edge insisted. Edge insulted Triple H because he had just turned heel. In the segment, who retaliated by sending the Shield, which consisted, which, uh, uh, by sending the Shield to attack Ed Edge's friend Christian. When Edge went to confront Triple H, he was escorted um, from the building. Edge hosted the Cut It Edge um, on the September 13th episode of SmackDown where he mocked Randy Orton and watched as Orton's attack on Brian backfired. Um, Edge and Christian hosted the December 29th, 2014 edition of Raw um, where they held the first ever Cut It Edge peep show interviewing Seth Rollins who along with Big Show attacked them Rollins held Edge hostage, thus forcing John Cena to reinstate the authority when Rollins tried to break Edge's neck. Um, anyway, Cena ended up making the save, and they this allowed um, John Cena to have to put back the authority. And this actually, in a way, was a passing of the torch to Edge to Seth Rollins, because Seth Rollins was like the new Edge at that point, so in a way, it put over Rollins huge. On the September 7th, uh, yeah, on the September 7th, 2015 edition of Raw, he and Christian made a backstage appearance with Seth Rollins, The New Day, and the Dudley Boys. Um, Edge also appeared with Christian on a podcast with Stone Cold Steve Austin later that same night on the WWE Network. Uh, later that week, it was announced Edge would co-star in WWE Studios' um, integration with Diva Lana. And they and that segment they did... um. With um, uh, the new day, what Edge and Christian did when they had the kazoo versus trombone battle was just a classic. I can't wait to see the, the new day be on the cutting edge peep show, um, tonight. I kind of hope they move that to the actual show itself, and then it it was a and a, they're gonna have the own show called the uh Edge and Christian's show that totally weeks of awesomeness, which I think is gonna be amazing and hilarious. Um, so let's go through his personal life. I kind of already talked about it, though. Um, well, let me go through uh, his other things. So, yeah, he's had it's a WWE Network. For video games, he's been in WWF Attitude in June 1999. Um, WWF WrestleMania 2000 in October 1999. WWF Royal Rumble 2000 video game in August 2000. He was on the cover of that game. He was in WWF No Mercy in November 2000. And he was on the cover of that game. Um, he was in WWF Betrayal in August 2001. Then later on in November, he was in Just Win It. And then um, he was in Road to WrestleMania in November 2001. And then in February 2002, he was in the video game WWF War. And then uh, in, Ju in June 2002, he was in the video game WWE WrestleMania 18. Then later on that same year, he was in SmackDown Shut Your Mouth in October. And then um, in March 2013, he was in the video game Crush Hour. Um, and then uh, in September 2003, he was on the cover of WWE WrestleMania 19. And then later on in Septem um, September the same month, he was in the video game War 2. And then in, um, a month later in October, he was in the video game Here Comes the Pain. And then in August 2014, he was in WWE Day of Reckoning. And then the next year in August in 2005, he was in Day of Reckoning 2. Then in, then in November of 2004, he was in WWE SmackDown vs. Raw. Then a year later in November 2005, he was in WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. Then in November 2006, he was in the WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Then, he was, then in November 2007, he was in WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. Um, in November 2008, he was in the WWE video game WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. And then he was on the cover in October 2009 um, of WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. And then in 2010, in October, he was in WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2011. And then in March 2011, he was in WWE All-Stars. Um, and then in November 2011, he was in WWE 12. Um, and then in October tw um, 2012, he was in WWE 13. Um, he, and then... Um, and, um, October 2013, he was in WWE 2K14. And October 2014, he was in WWE 2K15. And then the latest video game he was in is in October 2015, he was in WWE 2K16. And for his personal life, um, he uh, used to play hockey with retired 
National Hockey League um, player Aaron Downey. Um, he is a fan of the NHL's New Jersey Devils. And then I talked about how he attended WrestleMania. Um, and how he returned later on that same year. His autobiography, Adam Koblen on Edge, was published on um, at, on um, November 4th, 2004. Unlike most wrestlers who use ghostwriters to write his their biographies, Koblen wrote the entire book himself in long hand. Mick Foley, who also wrote his wrestling autobiography himself in long hand, um, wrote the forward to his book. Edge does not smoke. He claims he had his first cigarette when he was 16, hated it, and has not smoked since. Um, Copeland has several tattoos, a red and black um, sun on his left upper bicep, which covers a tattoo of a muscular shark, which resembles the street sharks, a star on his um, right upper bicep with several smaller stars and two um, skull-wearing bandanas along um, a door. Adorned with flowers and hearts. He has a lot of tattoos, pretty much. Um, I'm just going to kind of skip the tattoo part. Because it's like, you can just read that for yourselves. Um, Edge's favorite band is the Foo Fighters. He... As he revealed during his Hall of Fame induction. And he also used to like kiss as a kid. Um, he used to paint himself in his face. Um, in March 2007, Copeland became a key figure in an aligned, alleged steroid win and drug investigation. On March 19th, Sports Illustrated posted an article um, on its website in its continuing series investigating a steroid um, and H. GH win used by a number of prof professional athletes in several sports. This that article mentioned several current and for and former WWE wrestlers, including Copeland, who was alleged to have obtained HGH. Um, Copeland had previously admitted to using steroids in April two thousand four after neck surgery as an experiment on TSN's Off the Record with Michael um, Landsberg. Landsberg in t January 2005 he said he felt it slowed him down so he quickly got off the substance according to Copeland he took HGH after returning from a spinal fusion neck surgery he also he was also told by doctors that it would end up that it would help the bones grow back around the screws and plate that were inserted into his neck he claims to have um, taken blood tests consulted Doctors studied the drug and got prescriptions before deciding to take them. <clears throat> According to a Sports Illustrated article rotated on August 30th, 2007, Copeland was named one of 10 superstars found to have purchased steroids and other drugs from an online pharmacy, a violation of the WWE ta talent re re wellness policy. Copeland was si said to have received... Um, all a bunch of stuff between September two thousand four and February two thousand seven. Copeland has been married twice. His first marriage was to, um, Alana Morley. I think is how you say that. The sister of Sean Morley. On November eighth two thousand one, they divorced after two years. On March tenth two thousand four, his second marriage was to Lisa Ortiz. On October twenty first two thousand four. The couple to force on November 17th, 2005. He is currently in a relationship with f former WWE diva Beth Phoenix. Um, on December 12th, 2013, Copeland and Phoenix had a daughter and named her Lyric. So then in wrestling, his finishing moves is the buzz killer, um, or you could call it the execution, the m DDT, sometimes from an elevated position. Oh, hold on, sorry. And he used that from 1998 through 2002. Um, and used as a signature move thereafter. He has a downward spiral, which he used from 1998 to 2000. The Educator, um, which was his, innova his innovative finisher. The Kill Switch, he used that in 2011. Adopted, and it was adopted from Christian. 
Um, one man cold chair, which is his one of his innovative moves, and then the spear with theatrics. Um, and I'm not gonna go into his signature moves, but some of them are a diving cross body, edge o matic, flapjack, electric chair, other things like that, the sharpshooter, um, the win and edge. Uh, his um, the tag team finisher, the tag Edge and Christian's tag team finisher. Um, was the uh, um, the con the concerto um, when they both do it, and um, that's the like team finishing moves, and then the double team signature move is a simultaneous sidewalk slam that Edge does, and then a fallen inverted DDT that Christian does, and then his finisher with uh, Rey Mysterio is uh, when Rey Mysterio does a six one nine after Edge, followed by either a spear by Edge or the execution. Um, and then, uh, I'm not gonna go into the signature moves. Um, the one that he, his finisher with Randy Orton is, uh, double RKO, uh, or the concerto, um, two. And the double team signature moves, uh, is a double drop kick. And his managers throughout the years have been Gangrel, Terry Reynolds, Shane McMahon, Lita, Vicky Guerrero, and Stephanie McMahon. His nicknames are the Rated Out Superstar, the Master Manipulator, Mr. Money in the Bank, the Ultimate Opportunist, um... His entrance theme songs are "You Think You Know Me" by Jim Johnson, and and he got that in two thousand in in June two thousand two nineteen ninety eight, which is um his um the song that he has now, um, "Blood" by Jim Johnson, and he got and he had that and and he got it in October twenty sixth nineteen ninety eight, and he um stopped using it in August nineteen ninety nine. He only used it when he was part of the Brood, um. And then he has On the Edge by Jim Johnson. Um, and uh, he got that one on October 2nd, 1999. And he stopped using it in, uh, in September 21st, 2000. No, and he stopped using it in September 2001. But then he brought it back in October 26, 2002. Um, but then um, he stopped again. But then he brought it back in April 18th, 2004. And then he stopped using it completely in October 18th, 2004. Um, and then another one he has is Never Gonna Stop, uh, the Red, the Red, Red Groovy, and it's by Red Zombie, um, and he got that, and he started using it in September 2001, and he stopped in March 22nd, 2004, and then the other one, I don't know how to say it, it's Meta Lingus, I think is how you say it, by Alter Bridge, and he got that in November 1st, 2004, and he stopped in November 30th, 2014, and some of his championship and accomplishments. He is a former, um, he is a one-time Canadian Wrestling Association North American champion. Um, he is a two-time insane championship wrestling street fight tag team champion. He held it once with Christian Cage and then again with um, Joey, with Joey Legend. Um, and then um, he is a also a one-time um, IWC slash NWCW Midwest Unified Tag Team Champion, and he held that one time with Joey Legend. Um, and um, he won the um, Luthez Award in 2013, the Jews Trigos Luthez International Wrestling Inter In Institute. Um, and he's uh, also a one-time um, outlaw championship wrest championship tag championship wrestling tag team champion with all also with Joey Legend. Some of his pro Re wrestling illustrated awards that he's won in two thousand four he won comeback of the year. Um, in two thousand five he won feud of the year with Matt Hardy with Lido in his corner. Two thousand six he won feud of the year with John Cena. In two thousand he had the match of the year with um, when. Uh, it was him and Christian versus the Dudley Boys versus the Hardys in a triangle ladder match at WrestleMania 2000 or 16, whatever you want to call it. And then in 2001, he won match of the year again um, when he teamed up with Christian again to face the same teams, the Dudley Boys and the Hardys, in a tables, ladders, and chairs match at WrestleMania 17. In 2006, he won the Most Hated Wrestler of the Year award. In 2001, he won the Most Improved Wrestler of the Year award. And in the... Pro Wrestling Illustrated ranked him 
two of the top 500 singles wrestlers in the PWI 500 in 2007. And then, then um, he is also a uh, four-time WWE champion, a seven-time World Heavyweight champion, a five-time Intercontinental champion, a one-time WCW United States champion. He is a 12-time um, World Tag Team champion. He held the ch- he held the titles seven times with Christian, one time with um, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, two times with Chris Benoit, one time with Randy Orton, and one time with Chris Jericho. He is um, a former WWE Tag Team Champion. He is a former two-time WWE Tag Team Champion, I should say. He held it once, once with Rey Mysterio and once with Chris Jericho. He um, it, he won the Ken of the Win in 2001. He won the Money in the Bank ladder match in 2005. He won the Royal Rumble in 2002. Not 2002, 2010, sorry. Um, he won it. Um, he in 2010 he won a Bragging Rights Trophy with Team SmackDown, which consisted of Big Show, Rey Mysterio, Jack Swagger, Alberto Del Rio, Tyler Rex, and Kofi Kingston. He, um, he is the 14th Triple Crown Champion, a seventh and the seventh Grand Slam Champion. He was uh, a WW. He is the class of two, he is a WWE Hall of Famer class of 2012. He won the Slammy Award twice in 2008. He won the Couple of the Year. Um, with Vicky Guerrero, and in 2010, he won the O Snap Meltdown of the Year when he destroyed the anonymous Raw General Manager's computer. Um, and then the uh, some of his Wrestler Observer newsletters that he won is in 2002 he won the Match of the Year award um, when uh, he teamed up with Rey Mysterio to face Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle at No Mercy. Um, in 2000, he won Tag Team of the Year with Christian. Um, in 2010, he won Worst Feud of the Year with Kane. Um, and in 2008, he had the Worst Worked Match of the Year when he was in the Triple Threat Match with Vladimir Kozlov and Triple H at Survivor Series. Um, and he also won during the Invasion um, storyline. What does that mean? The... I don't know what that one means. Oh. So then, uh, that's all for Edge right there. Sorry, I forgot to talk about this earlier, so I have to read, I just, uh, forgot. Um, so now I, I really am going to end the video off this time, like I talked about. I already talked about what Edge meant to me in, earlier in the video, so I'm going to end this video off. And I got three words for you. Like, comment, and subscribe.